Hello, and well, welcome to my stream. And of course, it seems like every time I say hello when I start a stream, um, a cat needs to poke in and say hi. I think they think that because I'm talking, it's it's clearly I'm talking to them, and not to some ethereal people online. So they start asking for attention immediately. What I wanted to do today is I've picked a random palette from ColourPod and picked a page. It'll be this one from Johanna Basford's World of Wonder, Worlds of Wonder. And I'll show the color palette on the screen. I have it here. There we go. Up. And I figured that would be a nice one to do. I'm going to use that for the colors of the flowers and then I'll pick the rest of the colors based off of how that looks. So the first step would be picking out pencils for that. I don't have a printer, so I have to basically do this more or less by eye, but I start picking any colors that seem to match, test them out, and then maybe find some other colors to go with it for lighter or darker. But immediately for that blue, I was thinking Saber and Dark Knight, seem to be the closest and I always have a little this is my scratch pad notebook where I write down my stuff so the numbers are right beside each other so yeah and then if I had to pick a lighter color I'd go for Picasso Sky let me see what else I have in this set none of these colors would work well for a lighter tone yeah I think I'm gonna use I'm gonna try this one, 150. I mean, 150, 151, 152 should be, should be, should work. <laughs> that should work. Okay, let's see. For the second one, um, I think Bloodshot was the one. Sorry, not, no, Shiraz was the one that looked the closest. So we'll go DG 158. And maybe this one. As a lighter one, we could do these two, and actually that might work for the other one, so DG154, yeah, and then Bruise is like the third color, yeah, DG156, and that one's going to be a bit harder to get a darker, lighter color, maybe eggplant? Eggplant might work. And that should be enough. And then I believe something like fudge or bliss might be. I like putting this like there. Yeah, let's see. Fudge looks and then Okay, so let's go with might as well grab and then 101 and then the lightest we'll use mushroom as i think the other one was ice cream and i find that those colors are so light in the end that you like can't see them and need some darker colors i think i've got quite a selection there so Let's see if I can find these all. So many colors. There we go. Now I find that two colors, two to three seems to be about as much. I feel like these two don't have enough contrast, but we'll see. Like I might have to go either lighter or darker. That one feels more like a burnishing color. You can barely see it on the page. And that one's a very different pink. I feel like this one is a completely different color. So we have one group there, one group there, there, and then without this one, that's a fourth group. Now we have one, two, three, four types of flowers. So if we don't use that one, we could use the other four combinations. 
this one might need something a bit dark go with that one. That one might so that's uh, that might work. And that goes back inside because we're not gonna use you. I have all the flower colors based on approximately the colors on the palette and some of them were used as just different tones of and some were used entirely as the base and then I picked two different colors. Now the thing is when you're working with stuff this small sometimes you don't need more than two because you really can't see more than that. Now I have to decide what colors I'm using where. And we only have one blue and all the others are pink. My instinct would say, because we have one blue, is to make it the big ones so that it pops, or the small ones because they're the most numerous. I always feel like big flowers have to be like pinker or something. I'm, I'm tempted to make the big flowers the darker pink, so I might make the small flowers the blue. I think we'll do that. So this will be smallest and this will be the largest. And then we'll do the light ones, the ones with the long petals. And then that leaves the smallest long petal, right? And then these rounded middle. Okay, so I kind of don't need this right now, but I am going to leave it up on the stream. And these are the Black Widow, Dragon, and Monarch sets. So the only two sets I have for that, I haven't picked up any of the other sets yet. I'm basically waiting for them to go on sale. Do you do that too? Like, just have a bunch of stuff in your wish list, and then like every so often, I'll go check and see which ones are <laughs> are on sale. If anything's on sale, that's that's when I'll pick them up. Because or else we spend too much money. And my partner's already, already, every time I get something off of Amazon, they're like, what did you get this time? And I'm like, I, maybe I got something for coloring. Maybe. They're more amused than upset. I mean, it, it's fine. But also, it's just, I started down this, this rabbit hole this year. And... And it's not cheap. All my pocket money starts going into into coloring books now. They they have to indulge us, but you know, they still have to get in a jab and and laugh at us. It was like the last time we went to HomeSense, and we were there to get my mother in law a birthday present, and we passed by the 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 like stationery section. And I saw that they had coloring books and I'm like, oh my God. And my partner was like dragging me away already. And I was like, no, but I need to see what they have. And oh my God, they've got the Mitographic series. And I went to look and they were like $6. So I was like, oh no, 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 you don't understand. I need to grab these because they're way cheap. These are like 20 to $30 on Amazon. So that's how I got my hands on my first two Mythographic books. I would have grabbed more. They had like seven or eight different types, all for six dollars. I was like, oh god. But no, I held back. I only bought two. My first my first set was my first sets, I guess, was a Hethrone marker set and the Amazon Basics pencils. And why am I grabbing I'm grabbing the wrong one. <laughs> And then I started grabbing these, the, the Black Widow sets, because they were on sale. Or at least I had gone down in price. I don't know if it's still on sale and that's just like their new price or whatever, but I got them cheaper. And now I'm just waiting for the other sets to go on some kind of sale before I get them. And then I slowly started, like, I wanted to get alcohol markers. And that was the, that's been my newest purchase, getting alcohol markers. I keep saying I'm going to do commissions to like cover the cost of those materials. But then I'm always scared of opening commissions because I do art. Besides coloring, I do my own art. And actually, hold on. 
I've got my sketchbook here. This is one I finished with markers the other day that I drew myself. So the idea is to do commissions and do stuff like this or like that. Those two were done with watercolor, with water markers, water based markers. But I'm always like nervous to draw for other people. If I'm doing it for myself, there's like, it's fine. I, it doesn't matter. But as soon as it's like, oh, you want me to draw who? And I have to get it like correct. And what if I can't? And, and then the doubt c creeps in. What if I don't like what they want me to draw and then I never finish it? That's why coloring is different. You just color and there's there's no problem. There's no expectation. There's nothing. Nothing but relaxing coloring. Just filling in something someone else drew. I wonder how I'm going to do the like center of these. I almost want to go dark. Maybe I do it with a dark pencil. I like coloring because it's like, you don't have to worry about anything but what you're coloring. Yes, I like this. Darkest color. And my partner keeps saying, you don't need more books. You already have so many. And I'm like, I only have seven. <laughs> it's only seven. You know. It's nice to have a variety because sometimes you want to do like a complicated page. I have I have a couple of work in progress pages right now. And now I'm starting another one. But, you know. It's for the stream. But it's nice to go back and forth. Like sometimes you just, you know, you want to do pencils. So you go into the, the books you like to do with pencils. Or another day you don't really want to work with something that maybe your hands are tired or whatever. And markers is just easier because you don't have to worry about how much you, how much force you put on the page. I like having the choice of switching back and forth. That's why I like the, the alcohol markers. Just have that, like, you can put a base down and there's no streaking or anything. And then another day you can use pencils to to add the shading. I've done, depending on the on the paper as well, like, it'll it'll affect what you can do. I've, I've, I've actually on this one, the Johanna Basford paper, which is relatively thick, I was doing this page and my hands were getting cramped from burnishing the leaves and I discovered that I could use I could shade with the pencils and then use the water-based markers on top to kind of like burnish but with markers instead and it came out like you cannot tell the difference between the ones that were done with pencil and which ones were done with marker because it was that close and it really helped to get rid of like all of the white in the in the in the leaves so that was that was really good to find out because sometimes you just it's the burnishing part that tires your hands so so there's a trick for you shading and pencil and then water markers on top because the pencil gives it like a shiny surface to work on so you don't get the streaks from from the markers as much i the first time i grabbed a, uh, a book I, I was going to go like from start to finish. And then I realized that I was going to hate that because it really depends on the mood I'm in. So I just pick whatever page I feel like doing and, and color that in. And I'm not even too worried if I have like work in progresses. If I feel like doing something else or if a page is like really calling at, on, on me, then I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll come back to the other one eventually. Like there was one page I finished last month, this one, that had been a work in progress for ages. And I finally went back to it and it was like, okay, I want to finish another page. So I did that one. Sometimes you want that like reward of finishing a page. And other times you just want to color whatever you feel like coloring. So I also really like the books like Johanna and uh, Rita Berman that have like pages that have like either smaller stuff or like sectioned off page pieces that you can do smaller bits and finish only that square and come back to it later. 
when you just want to do something small and not work on a big project. I feel like I need to go a bit darker in the center on these. I swear I said, like, these flowers are so tiny. You can barely tell when you layer two, more than two colors on it. Because it all just blends right in. It does help with the center being darker, though. I don't know why I always picture small, f multiple flowers blue and the big single flowers pink. Pink or red, I guess, but mostly pink for me. I don't know why. I'm not even a fan of pink. I just imagine flowers being pink. Sometimes there's a... An unfinished page can bring anxiety, right? So you got to finish the page and then you, you feel that sense of accomplishment. I have finished the page. I always have that. Do you have that feeling when you finish a page that you just got to like stare at it and, and just have it open on your table to look at? And you got to share it with your partner. I think that's why the coloring book community has so much like sharing pages and everything. We just got to share. <laughs> look what I finished. Isn't it pretty? Because every new page you finish is better than the last because that's how practice works. And the more you practice at something, the better you are. And I look at my like first pages and they're already horrible to me. And I only started coloring this year. I got I got my supplies for Christmas. My first supplies were Christmas gifts last year. So yes, flipping through finished pages is awesome. I think that's that's what made me end up doing that. This is video. That my first coloring page video, showing my August finished pages, and I did not expect it to do as well as it has. I I may have underestimated the size and the amount of people <laughs> that just comment and everything on videos of people coloring. But that's what made me start the stream. So. Yay. I think part of it for learning is experimenting. But I do have an, a slightly, uh, let's call it unfair advantage that I am an artist. I've been drawing for years. So especially for, for things like color theory and all that, I have I have some experience under my belt. But it's fine to do, to, to not, not necessarily uh, improve by leaps and bounds sometimes you don't even notice you're improving and then you look back and and that's when you're going to start noticing the difference but even like I, like I said I'm I'm used to doing art I I draw art for for merch and I sell stuff that is essentially my my day job and even then my first coloring pages are they're not bad I wouldn't call them bad <laughs> I'm not that harsh on myself. But but they don't compare to the newer pages I finished. <laughs> I I don't want to be too mean on on my first pages, but yeah. The first pages I didn't really I was just coloring for coloring and now I put a bit more a bit more work and thought into what I'm doing. I think the watching all the videos on YouTube has helped. <laughs> make me want to do cooler stuff the one problem with looking at videos from other people is that they have all these like materials and the the stickles and the watercolor paints and the metallic watercolor paints and all these distressed ink for the backgrounds and i'm like i've got colored pencils i have some markers and that's it would I like to start using watercolors? Yes, absolutely. I I want to test out watercolors, but the only watercolor set I have is a set from like the 60s or 70s and it is for school. So the watercolor paints are not the best. And I'm frankly frightened of using them in these books because I don't think I don't think they're going to work as well. I did buy some watercolor paper to like test them out separately and to try to get a grasp of how to use them because I have 
never used watercolors before in my life. Okay, so I, I, I could keep going with the blue, but I kind of want to see how this is all going to look. And also, so I have like at least one of these done for the stream, because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. So I said the largest was going to be the next set of colors. Now, I did dark in the center for these. I kind of think I'm going to do it the opposite way. I'm going to do a shading here where they overlap. And then we do the darkest and the tip. One of the first things I invested in was an electric sharpener. I have a lot of issues with my weak body. And the first time I went to sharpen a pencil, dear God, my hand hurt so much. So I realized I wasn't going to be able to do this long term if I had to sharpen my pencils by hand. That movement of like, even doing this, I can feel like the pain here. So I was like, nope, I need a proper sharpener that does not require strength of hand you end up sharpening pencils so much especially for adult coloring books because there's so many areas that are so tiny that you kind of need that that sharp tip so it's better to do it with an electric sharpener i'm also envious of all the people who have like polychromos and all those like expensive pencils i know polychromos aren't exactly the most expensive but it does seem like they're the most used you go to every channel and they're like, that's their default pencil. At this point, I'm even kind of scared to try them because then I'm going to be like, oh yes, these are the only pencils for me. <laughs> I can't go back to using anything else. How long do these take me? I want to say something like five hours, five to six hours. Obviously not necessarily in one sitting, but yesterday I got most of a page done. and. I was at it for hours. I didn't even realize how long it had been until I looked at the time and it was like, oh, wow. I was essentially all evening working on the page. I ended up stopping because the sun was going down. So I didn't have much sunlight to work with and I had been working with sunlight. Now for streaming, I can't use sunlight because the window is not in the same direction as where my cam is. So I'm using a desk light today, which, you know, has the advantage that it is one solid color and doesn't change on you as the sun goes down. <laughs> yeah, hold on, let me grab. I, I felt like doing markers yesterday, so I was using my, my sets of alcohol markers, and that's how far I got. I still have to do the details. Like, I'm I'm almost done, but I have to do... There, that painting, the awning here, and that area there, and then the grass and rocks at the bottom. But I'm really liking how this page is coming out. And since I have this here, this is one of my first pages. So you can see a bit of difference even in just the color choices I have. Thanks to new markers, because... And this was my very first coloring page, which, you know, like I said, it's not bad. It, you can, there, it's not burnished either. And there's, the shading is very simple, but there is, there is a bit of a leap there. Slightly better at things now. I think a lot of it is what I have available because the first page there was made with Amazon Basics pencils and some old alcohol markers that my partner had in storage same with the second page that was like alcohol markers that just a few colors and i think i used some of the hethron water markers but my color selection wasn't the best and i think that affects it a lot when you have more colors to work with you can get away with more nuance I feel like sometimes when you're coloring over something and it's like, it doesn't seem like you're doing much. I guess it's just details that you can only see in person and the cameras can only pick so much up. 
I go really dark on the edges there so that it contrasts with the bottom petals. I also tend to try not doing too much back and forth just because I get tired easily. We're not exactly trying to go for realism here, we just want it to look pretty. Alright, so I'm gonna leave the other big ones for a bit later. And we're gonna go for the medium. Which I think this only has one medium on this far. Uh, one. There's a lot more on the other side. But try and do some streaks. It's probably only gonna work if I picked colors that give me enough contrast, but let's see. Gonna go directly for the light one. Maybe what I could do is instead of burnishing with this, I keep it light and then I use a colorless blender to do the rest of the blending. Just to keep it light. And I might not actually use the middle color unless it's for the center of the flower. That would work. I'll try darkening these lines more. And this is what I mean with like, you don't really need to always have that many colors for somewhere. Maybe I should have tried using white. That's not bad. They're so tiny you can barely see them on the screen. And we're gonna try enter a yeah bit of contrast. Okay and then this one's the one where I'm absolutely not sure of what's gonna happen here but I think I'm gonna do um, I'll use this yellow in the center just as a base and then I'm going to pick the darkest pink I'm going to go in the center of the petal I think this is going to be another one where I might not use all of the colors because these flowers are so thin and the colors are so light you won't really be able to tell them apart I'm basically just putting a bit of the darkest tone right in the center of the petal. Trying to go darker towards the center of the flower, just so it has that bit of gradient. The cam is kind of like whiting it all out. Okay. That is so light, you can barely see it. Even in real life, I can barely see this color. I've noticed that I think it's the Monarch set has a lot of colors that, especially on this like off-white paper, you cannot really see the color at all. And it's kind of frustrating because at one side it's like, they're pretty colors, but I can't see them. So what's the point? I feel like this is the lightest you could go where I can see it in real life. But you kind of have to pay attention to what you're looking at to actually see it. And that's only if I essentially burnish the color. If I put a light coating of this, it I might as well not. Because it just disappears on the page. It's, it's like it's page colored. It's like using white. A white pencil on a white paper. You just don't see anything. I think that's why I usually go for more vibrant, darker colors. I like being able to see. Not that this looks bad. It, it, it does look good. But this isn't even the lightest color I picked. I'm just ignoring the lightest color because honestly, this is already light enough. Might as well. It's, it's kind of hard to see where I'm, I have it colored it in properly. <laughs> can you even tell? I guess if I put it closer you can kind of see it. All right, so back to the big ones and I guess I'll finish this up and call it a day for the stream. How long have we been going for? Oh, an hour. <laughs> well, it's not like I've been coloring for an hour because it did take me a while to get all the colors. I also don't want it to go for too long. I don't know what the attention span of colorists is, though I guess a lot of people put these videos in the background when they're doing their own coloring just to have some company. 
keep asking my partner to color with me so that I have some company with them beside me doing their own coloring. But they have a day job, so they're usually tired when they get home and they don't want to do stuff like coloring. They just want to play video games or something. Probably doesn't help that the first coloring book that their mom gave them was a Thomas Kincaid Disney coloring book. And that thing is a challenge. <laughs> It's beautiful, but coloring in the Thomas Kincaid books is is really hard. Especially if you want to try as much as possible to make it look like the originals, because the originals were done with oil, not colored pencil. So it's not easy to imitate colors with a different medium. I should probably just offer them one of my books, let them color a page in one of my coloring books. So that it's actually relaxing and not <laughs> something that will stress them out. I admit I did a lot of research when I started coloring. When I, when I decided to get some coloring books, I should say, to put on my wish list. And I did like look at flip through and to see what kind of book I wanted to get that would have a good variety of like... Detailed, but not too detailed, something that I could, you know, get started in. And this was the book I decided on as my first one, Worlds of Wonder. And the other one I got was the nice little town because I wanted something with buildings in it. But yeah, I was very picky because I wanted to make sure it was something I was going to enjoy. That it was something that wasn't going to be too hard for me to pick up. Now I have a bunch of books on my list and some of them are more complicated than others. <laughs> But you have to start small and easy, and I think my favorite for that is Rita Berman and and Johanna Basford books. They seem like just the right amount of detail without being too over the top. I love their mixing and shading abilities of pencils, but in the long run... I always feel the burn on my... I can never go as for long with these compared to with uh, markers. Yeah, attention span is a, is, a, is a thing. Honestly, I'm kind of excited for Small Victories to come out from Johanna Besford because that one's going to be like the the smaller images and that's like one page is just this. But that's why I like the Basford books that have like I don't have to do the full page. I can just do this. I don't have to do like I these pages are going to take me ages and they're probably not going to it's going to be a while before I get to them. I like the the smaller pages like I can focus on just this. I can worry about the rest later. And that's why I always like keeping these my notebook I have I keep track of like the colors I use for for different pages i have yeah that was for another page i used a lot of colors on that one <laughs> and i just keep the colors out if if i haven't finished with it on one day but i do like that there are you know the the different simpler co coloring books that have easier easier pages that you can get through in one sitting because sometimes you just need that win of, I finished a page. Yay! There's something exciting about seeing a coloring book page go from blank to full of color. And being able to say, I did this. I colored this. And it looks so good. And that's where all the sharing comes into play online. Because we need to share it with everyone look at this masterpiece I've created. I am so happy. I am hoping to get, what's it called? I think it's to the ends of the earth and back or something like that. That's that like long accordion coloring book. I have that on my wish list for, for Christmas and I'm hoping to have that as my challenge for next year. Color in a page or a spread of that each month. And do that one in order till I finish it all. And maybe that one I'll do like a full color along. 
because that seems like a, a sane project for sane people. We'll see how the channel's doing. <laughs> I'm always like, but will people will people actually look at that? Like, is that something people would be interested in watching? Someone color a coloring book from start to finish. I have another channel where I do tabletop streaming, and we play stuff like Dungeons and Dragons and other games, and we don't get many views. And partially, I I understand it's because it's a lot of commitment, like. Watching people play a game for four hours at a time, it's its a lot of commitment. At the same time, if you like stories and you need some background noise of people talking while you color, I would suggest looking up actual plays. Because it can be fun that way. That's what I would do when I'm doing art. I'll have an actual play playing in the background. It's like listening to an audiobook, but a bit more chaotic because it's a, a group of people acting out their characters and going on adventures. And some people get really invested in the stories that happen in actual plays. One of the ones we played through was based on um, Legend of Zelda. And the players were trying to save Hyrule after and realizing that they all were a part of Link that had, whose soul had shattered. So there was no one hero, it was a group of heroes that had to save Hyrule this time. And that was fun. I even did art of them. And as a commemoration, when we were done playing, I even got a little standee of the party. So that each of the players could have a memento of our game. I don't think I've, I, I have, I think the max I have is this book, and this book has like 80 pages, so it's going to take me a while to get it done front to back. I do want to get as close to possible as done with the ones I have. I only have seven books at the moment before I pick up too many others, but it is nice to kind of like pick between books and switch it up. My attention span isn't the best, so I like being able to switch which book I'm coloring in. Yeah, I remember seeing coloring books in in bookstores and being like, oh, that would be fun, but I don't have pencils. I don't have anything. Because I may be... I color. I am, I'm, I'm an artist. But... Oh, those are leaves, aren't they? But I'm a digital artist. So all of my supplies were nothing. My computer and my, my coloring tablet. So getting into coloring books meant picking up everything from scratch and I was like but I already color like I already draw my own stuff why would I why would I get into coloring someone else's stuff but then I realized that there is a difference sometimes you just don't want to have to worry about making line art and deciding what to draw you just want to color I think partially my mentality also changed with the on onset of like so much AI, I don't want to call it art, but AI images online and that like despair of like, is that going to affect my living as an artist and getting back into like traditional media because, you know, we still have, we, st we, we don't have AI for traditional media yet. And I think that might have pushed me a bit more towards doing all this because this was a good uh, excuse for getting back into traditional medias that I hadn't done or hadn't used in years, honestly. I got so used to coloring digitally, having that control alt delete, being able to fix things using layers, all of that stuff that you can't use in real life. <laughs> So coloring books was my excuse to get back into it and test things out and learn how to use markers again. Or at all, honestly. I had never used alcohol markers before. And I kept seeing videos of people drawing with alcohol markers and I'm going like, that looks so good! I want to do that. <laughs> that one had a lot more petals than the others did. 
hopefully my tissue just doesn't show up on stream. I am slightly, I have a cold. A runny nose. Worst part of a cold. Well, I say that, but I don't know if it's worse that you have a runny nose or the fact that your brain is kind of like in a perpetual fog. That feeling that you're can't quite think straight. At least it's not too bad. Usually I end up really bedridden whenever I have a cold because my immune system is really weak. But this time so far has been tolerable. Hopefully it stays that way until it's gone. That was part of my doubt about doing a stream today because I was like, what if I start the stream and then I start feeling bad again and I have to stop it? And I was like, well, honestly, I just stopped the stream. Okay. Now I gotta pick some greens. We have one, that one's different. So two, three different types of leaves. I feel like I'm gonna end up picking two per at most. I'm going maybe with these two. So that is zombie and home life. Are they different enough? I almost feel like maybe I should grab a dark color. Maybe green glow. Yeah, that might be a bit too dark. About this one. Okay, so I could do these two and maybe these two. I like how these are all basically consecutive. Well, I guess the fact that they are consecutive just makes things easier. So you're choosing the right colors. Surely they will work well together if they are right beside each other. Now, usually I'd finish everything in, in a page that has a certain group of colors. Just so I can put those colors away. But I don't think I have the energy to do the full page. So I wanted to be able to finish at least this wheel so we can see that finished before I in the stream. Smaller leaves, I kind of want to do blue or green. Oh, wizard and is they are kind of similar in terms of darkness. And I darken this one. Yeah, that works. Gotta go real dark on inner bud there. I really like that color combo. Wasn't sure if it was gonna look that good against the blue, but I actually like the fact that these leaves are similar in tone to the blue of the petals. Darken it a bit more. I realize I tend to like colors that are more contrasting than anything. I think that's one difference with coloring something that I draw versus just coloring a coloring book is that I don't have to worry that hard on where my light sources are. You can kind of just go by the shape of the image and not worry about it too much. Obviously some consideration is nice because it makes things pop and look more three-dimensional, but we're definitely not using an overarching light source or anything here. You could. But then having like all of, I don't know, this shaded because it's underneath the wheel. Okay. Gosh. So many pencils. How many pencils have I used? 9, 12, 15. Nine. What am I doing with the background of the circle? feel like we have a lot of colors, so I don't want to necessarily leave the range, but we need it to not be the same color. kind of want to go dark. If I were to use, I think eggplant is my darkest color, and then there's the blue. 
I guess I could try going with eggplant and black to darken it some. I don't have any dark colors. But if I do... Because on this side, there's not many purple flowers. And the one that I did, I did the eggplant in the center. So I can probably get away with this. I can always just grab a brush pen and color it all black if I need to. I do like the contrast that black gives. Like, pure black. To stuff like flowers. I do want to try those, like, backgrounds where it changes color in certain areas, but I feel like this one's a bit too small to do something like that. There's not much space between the flowers. So keeping it dark seems to be the best option just to make everything pop. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to go with a, a black pencil over this in like the outer areas or darken the rim areas and then leave the center be the purple. Both could work. I feel like if I do edge darker, it might make everything pop more. Especially considering the other side is going to have more purple flowers that will have the same color as the one I'm using for the background. I know in some cases people do backgrounds first, and I've done it before in other places. But for something this small, I feel like doing it the other way is better because pencils can only layer so much, especially. If you don't have polychromos that seem to layer eternally, which means by layering over your pencils on your subject matter, it makes it less likely that you will go over the lines in the background with your other color because there's already penciling in there. So you'd have to apply a lot more force to get that color to go over the places that are already colored. That's why when there's something like this, I like to leave the background for last. Because then I can make sure that my pencil isn't going over the colors of the flowers. I still need to be careful, especially since right now I'm putting quite a bit of pressure. I'm not putting like burnishing pressure, but I am layering down quite a bit of pigment. Because I am both impatient and want the stream to be done. And I like to see how it looks. And I know I'm not layering too many colors here. At most I'm going to do over some places with black just to darken it a bit. I might leave it like this for now. See how it looks. I don't know if I want to go that dark with black because that is a bold choice to make. I guess it'll depend on if I think it needs more contrast or not. Which is not necessarily a decision I have to make immediately. If I get back to the first area I started, I can see how I went a lot darker over time. And the first areas look lighter. <laughs> of course, I left the hardest part around the lightest uh, petals for last. Gotta be careful. Now I'm just going over areas that I can kind of still see the white. Okay, so there we go. That turned out pretty good. Well, not bad. And maybe I'll do this again. We'll see how this goes and if people like it, maybe I'll make this a reoccurring thing. And maybe I'll finish the rest of this page on stream at least and do a full color along. And if I do, once I'm um, done here, I can put in the description all the colors I used or place it somewhere so that you want to use the same colors I did, you can do that. To those who came to watch and those who kept me company, thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye.